everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am at my sewing table, and last night I did a quilt as you go method to show you guys how you can put quilt pieces together. And I'm going to turn the panels into a tote bag. You can see I made two matching ones. I wasn't necessarily going to show you how to make the tote bag, but I figured since I only have a couple of other steps, I might as well just finish it and show you because I'm going to come up with some other kind of little handle that I just made up in my head. <laughs> so I thought in case it works out good, you'll know how to do it. I will link down below to the tutorial for this. I'm just doing this the way I normally do things. I sit down, I think about it for a minute, I attempt it and I either succeed or I fail. So let's hope that this is a success video. I wasn't even sure which fabric I wanted to use for the handles, but I am going to go with the plain blue that will match the sashings. My plan is just to make two small handles for the tote, and then I will be putting these totes together like this, and I'm going to sew the handles on first, and then I'm just going to sew around all three sides, and that's going to be the simple tote. Now, what I want to do with the handles is I want to make them with a little bit of polyfill in them. So I have to figure out how wide I want to cut the fabric, then I want to leave the two ends long enough so that I can fold under. I want to fold the raw ends of the strap under, and then I'll just attach them here on the tote somewhere, and then that will be nice and neat, and I'll do like a cross or double stitching or something. I'll show you that when we get there. So let me figure out how much I want to cut of this, and then I will show you the straps that I'm about to attempt. I'm just going to take a measuring tape to get an idea of like where I want the straps positioned and how long. So let's say I want about that much sticking up from the top. That looks good to me. Let's go with 15. Then I want to add, I would say, 3 inches to each side in order for me to be able to fold it over and sew it on there good. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. All right, so I know my straps are going to need to be 21 inches long, and I'm going to cut two of them. As for the width of the strap, this is just a scrap. What I have in my head is these ends are going to be folded in, so they will be stitched about a quarter or a half an inch in, and then I'm also going to stitch on this side the same to make it match, and then the center is going to be filled with polyfill. So I almost think this width is going to work for what I have in my head. So that is just about five inches wide. So I'm going to cut two pieces of fabric, five wide by 21 long. I have my two strips of fabric, 21 inches long, and I made a last minute decision to make them about five and a half inches wide because I don't really know what I feel like doing. I don't know how it's going to turn out. So I'd rather have things be a little bit too big and then I can adjust. Easier to make something smaller than bigger. What I'm going to do is I'm going to the iron and I'm going to fold down each raw edge about that much. Looks like half an inch. And I'm going to press it down all the way on this side and all the way on the other side. That was easy peasy. You can see that I have both sides folded in about a half an inch. Now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to fold it in half so that the raw edges are tucked inside and I'm going to press it down. And that was also easy peasy. So you can see, just fold it in half. Now I'm going to, because I want both sides to kind of match, even though this is a folded side and doesn't need to be sewn, I am going to sew about a half inch down, all the way down, just so it will match the finished product on the other side. You can see I have one side that opens, the other side doesn't, and I'm going to stitch about a half inch all the way down. Changed my mind. I'm going to make it more of a quarter of an inch. For me, that's just on the edge of my foot, so I'm going to let the edge of my foot go along the edge of the fold, and my stitch line will be about a quarter of an inch. It's fun to make things up as you go. It's the only way to sew. I'm just going to stay right here to explain the next step. I want to fill this handle, strap, whatever you want to call it, with some polyfill batting. So I need to find out how long of a piece I need to cut. 
I just sewed about a quarter of an inch in on this side and I will be doing the same on the other side. So I'm figuring like right about there. I want to measure between those two stitching lines and I see that it's about one and three quarters of an inch wide. I'm going to leave some room to play and I'm going to say one and a half. So I know I need some pieces of batting one and a half inches wide and for the length even though my strip is 21 inches I want to leave the three inches that I allowed on each end I want to leave those without batting so that I can easily fold and sew to the bag so I'm going to deduct the three inches on each end that brings us back to 15 inches so I need two pieces of batting 15 inches long by one and a half inches wide Here's one that I'm going to use for this. So I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to go about three inches down and I'm going to lay it on just one side because that's going to be folded over and sandwiched in. If it sticks out, you can trim some more or you can just tuck it in as you sew. I just want to be about three inches down. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit more. So I have three inches that will have no batting and that will allow it to be sewed onto the tote a little bit easier. I'm going to fold this over and like I said as I sew I'm going to tuck the batting in as I go if it's in my way and I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. And I have one strap already done. So let me do the other one. Two done. Now on each end I am going to just fold over about a half an inch and I'm going to stitch that down. Both sides. And on both straps. Now it's time to attach these to the tote. This is going to be the top of one side of the tote. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to take a strap and you can see the strap has one raw edge, one completely finished edge. We want the raw edge down. I'm just going to eyeball it and put it in the center of this block on the top and just a little bit down. I'm going to pin that. That's why I didn't want batting in that part of the strap because I didn't need it to be that bulky there. So I just tucked it in about two inches. Now without getting the strap all twisted, I'm going to do the same on this side. Just eyeball it. I'm an eyeball kind of girl. There. So I am going to sew this down. I'll probably go down, across, up, and then back. And then I'll do my signature X inside and that makes it very secure. So let me take you back over to the machine. Of course, I forgot to turn the camera on. All I did so far was just, I started like this, and on this side of the handle, I just stitched down. So now I'm ready to turn and go down. And I'm just like stitching in the ditch. I'm following and stitching on top of the lines that I've already stitched there. But you can do whatever you want. It'll work. Turn again. Turn again, and you really could stop there, but I'm going to go ahead and do the X. So I'm just going to sew from this corner to this corner. Then I'll be going across the bottom again to take me to the other side. And now corner to corner again. Back stitch a couple times. And we're done that side. And it looks good on both sides. You can see my nice little X there. And you can see how it turned out on the inside. That is going to be a mega sturdy. Now let's do the end of the other one. I think that's going to work out lovely. You can see it on that side. You can barely see it on this one. I can see it though. Okay, I'm going to do the other side. At this point, I want to make sure that the back side of my tote, like I don't want the light blue and light blue. 
Not that it matters, but I'm going print gingham. Print gingham. So I'm going to do it this way. So I know I want to use this as the top. Let's just get rid of this guy for now. My top, raw edge down, approximately in the center, approximately two inches down. Another raw edge, off to the machine. And here we go again. I did an extra little turnaround in there. I lost my way. I needed directions. Yay! Now we only have one final step. I'm going to put these likey so, and I am just going to stitch down, across, and up. And I will somehow double stitch it just so it really is secure. I've decided that I'm going to stitch on the outer edge first. That way I can really make sure that they match up pretty good and then I'll go around the whole thing again and stitching on the line like where the binding stitch is. Oh my god, it's so hot in here. I'll turn the heat down. So, I'm just going to go as close as I can. Why am I talking like that? I don't know. Get the heck out. Got a stupid thread there. Don't want you there. <laughs> Wrong glasses. Okay, at this corner here, there's a lot of folds of fabric. I am going to kind of stitch to the diagonal of that, just to make it a little bit easier. It's not going to make this bag any less sturdy, it's just going to let me avoid going on that corner. Okay, I'm going to do my diagonal trick again. Ah, that was... Are you friggin' kidding me that I ran out of thread? Get the F out. I did. Way back there. Not fair. Not fair. And I only spun one bobbin after I thought I would spin two. I said, no, one will be enough. Hang on. Hey, let's back up and start again. I'm about as miserable as it gets. I'm so hot. I have got to go. Put the heat down or something. Open the windows. Go outside. I'll go outside and grab my trash barrel that is still in the road from Wednesday morning. I turned the heat down. I went outside. Got cooled off. Brought my trash barrel in. Now, all we have to do is one more time around and we'll be done. This tote bag. Can't wait. You can see we have stitched the sides closed, but I'm just going to go again. Probably wouldn't even need it. Should I? Shouldn't I? I'm going to do it. Oh my god, I've come up with another decision. I'm going to go between the lines right here on the binding. I don't care if they overlap a little bit on one side or the other. It'll just look you know, like where the stitching belongs. So I think that's a good idea. All right, that is by far not the neatest method. You can see that we have lines going all over the place. And, you know, this side came out nicer. Let's look. Because I am going to be putting this on eBay, so I do want you to see how not perfect those lines are. But you know what? It's strong. And the whole reason that I even continue and just do things that I'm not, like, thrilled about is because I want to show you that you can make stuff. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it works, this is going to be a nice tote bag. It's going to hold lots of stuff. It's a way to practice. It's a way to learn what is easy to do, what isn't so easy to do. It's just, just got to go with the flow. I'm done. 
So you can see now that we have a lovely, lovely tote bag with some nice padded handles. It feels good to hold. It's going to hold lots of stuff. It's padded, so it's a nice bag to like use as an overnight bag if you want to put like some shoes in there, your pants, roll them up, and just pack some things. Whatever. I think whoever wins this is going to really, really like it. I love the padded feel of a tote bag. And it's nice and roomy, and it could be turned inside out, I guess. Let's see how that looks. The strap should look fine, just all plain. Now you certainly could have used a not plain lining and make it reversible and prettier. Oh, I have to work so hard. Okay, since this is plain, this is what you get. But look, see the straps match. This is what the tabs look like. So that is very doable. You can see the quilting. I like it. I do. Now it looks like a denim bag. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I'm suddenly so tired. I go wacky with this sewing. You know, I thought this was going to take me five minutes and I'm probably two hours in. So I will get busy doing my magical editing and I hope you enjoyed. Please keep watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. I would appreciate that. Like, comment, share. Sharing is wicked cool. Wicked like. So thank you so much and I'll be back in more soon. Bye! I've had time to rest a little bit since the making of this tote. I have to tell you that I absolutely love this. I love the fact that the handles are padded it just feels so good, and I don't know, I just like the fact that the whole tote is padded. I just think this makes such a nice overnight bag. You can put your shoes, your, your bag of makeup, just, I just like it a lot. And I don't know if you can see the colors true, probably truer here. I love the gingham, where are we? Gingham, with this swirled pattern. It's just like a little bit of funky and a little bit of country. I don't know. I like it. And I like that I went around a bunch of times just on the edge there. Doesn't bother me at all that it's not all perfect. It is sturdy. And as you know, the straps are on there for our life. And you certainly can wash and dry this in the machine. Wash and tumble dry. Cuddly could put a pillow in it and use it as a pillow in the car. Okay, that's it. I've got to get busy editing this masterpiece.